Hello and welcome. So in this video, I'm essentially going to show you one of the more common things that I do when I set up a, a Kali, right? So as you can see immediately, it is a bit uh, modified as in terms of uh, splitting like this and you see the border, okay? But I will essentially just give you what I do. So it's very basic. I tend to increase the font. It's a lot lower on default, right? Just uh, so it's easier for people to read. Uh, I don't personally need it this big, of course, but I've noticed people really prefer when it's a bigger font. So it is like this. And then also the color scheme is set to Linux, okay? I don't quite remember what it is on default, but obviously it's gonna look different. And then we do this, and then I tend to once again prefer mine at Linux. So it's gonna look like this. And then another thing that I do as well is that I have a draw a border, okay? So when I do control shift D to split it like so, you can see that I have a little thing right here, but it's not that clear um, between the two. So if I do preferences and then draw a border like so and apply it, and then I do control shift D again, it will look like this, okay? And if it looks messed up for your first time, just do control D to, to cut it and then control shift D to create a new border again. And then it's gonna look like this, right? So I just like this personally, because then you can just, it's very clear when, what you are working in. So that's one of the things that I do. I also recommend that you essentially do just a quick uh, update and upgrade. Um, with something like, just something basic like this, right? This will take some time, but it's a good idea to do it once you've set it up. And I also tend to do a snapshot after I have essentially done this, right? Now, in terms of tooling, there's obviously a lot of tools that are useful. You can use something like GoBuster for direct bit forcing. You can use something like FF as well. And also WFS, right? Um, I tend to use GoBuster just for simplicity, but you can use tools like Ferrobuster, which is not installed by default, I believe. Um, the nice thing about this is that it essentially does recursion by default. Um, if you're not quite familiar what that is, I don't believe GoBuster has it, but I think, I'm pretty sure FLOP has it, right? So I'm gonna show you. So if we do grep and then I recurse, you can see that it has this flag right here called recursion. Let me just uh, remove this real quick and then do that again. So it has this uh, called recursion right here. And essentially what it does is that basic director but forcing, right? You have essentially a list of different names, right? You have like docs, yeah? you have like admin, you have like whatever, let's say bio, okay? So you go to a normal website, right? Website.com. And then it's gonna try docs. Maybe it got a 404, right? Uh, because it doesn't exist. And then maybe admin. Let's say this doesn't exist. And maybe get a 403, right? Because you're not allowed to access this. And then let's say it tries bio. And then let's say that bio it found, okay? So it found this directory right here. What it's gonna try then is that if you have recursion on, it will essentially do bio, and then it's gonna try docs, and then admin, and then other things, etc. right? So, and then as it find, let's say it find another directory just called uh, lon, I don't know. <laughs> then it's once again gonna try like, docs and admin, and it's just gonna like automatically in one command, just kinda like uh, recursively try the payloads inside of the word list on the new directories as it finds, right? And that is quite useful. Now you can of course just do that manually with GoBuster, I'll just do that for simplicity, but there are some times I just tend to prefer using FF because it has recursion, okay? But yeah, I tend to keep it simple myself with something like GoBuster, but yes. Now, I wanna show you essentially how to get Burp Suite up and running, okay? So by default, you have Burp Suite right here. Okay, I don't wanna see this. And then it's gonna open up Burp Suite, but we cannot just use Burp Suite immediately, okay? And essentially what I mean by that is that Burp Suite is essentially a proxy, right? that is kind of like man in the middle in your traffic so that you can catch a request and so that you can modify things that you wouldn't possibly necessarily be able to do it normally in a browser, such as like you can modify headers, right? it's the values of headers, etc. 
And this is what makes proxies very valuable when you're doing reputation testing. Now, this is a preference thing. The first thing that I like to do is to immediately go onto user interface and then go to display and then just make it bar and click game. This is just a personal preference, but the proxy tab right here is normally intercepting web traffic. Okay. So let's say that we will go to uh, something like google.com. And as you can see, it does not intercept anything. That is because we are lacking some things for um, Burp Suite to be able to actually intercept it. Another thing as well, Burp Suite is by default listening on port 8080. Okay. So you are seeing this right here just because of Burp Suite running. I didn't close Burp Suite and you will see this disappearing, but I'm not going to do that for now just because of time sakes. Okay. So the first thing that we need is a Foxy Proxy uh, extension for Firefox. So I'm just going to download this, add to Firefox. I also wanted to be able to run in private windows, but it doesn't matter too much. Connect to toolbar, sounds good. And then I want to make a profile for BERT so that I'm actually listening on port 80. So we go to proxies, we go to add. I'm just going to call this one BERT. HTTP type, that's correct. Country doesn't matter, city doesn't matter. The host name is going to be this, essentially localhost. And then again, we want to be listening on port 80, 80. Okay. So when we are intercepting now with BERT, it will at least try through essentially the intercept the connection, but because Burp Suite, uh, we don't have the certificate for Burp Suite, so it essentially gives us this warning and we want to avoid this. Um, I don't quite remember what the patch was, so let me just go to my notes real quick. I mispiped it. But you can also grab my notes as well in the link about what you're interested in. But I'm just going to find the, da, 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 the installation path. Because I forgot the path, the IK. So. There we go. I guess I didn't specify it should be. But yeah, here is the certificate for Web Suite. And now we can go to settings. I'm essentially just showing you how to get it up and running. Because not everyone just knows this. And I'm just showing you for... Uh, for the sake of teaching and convenience. So we want to go to certificates right there. So click view certificates and then uh, authorities. And then we do want to do import. So, and then as we can see right there, it's in the recent tab from it or in the domain. So I just import this. I want it to identify websites and I do not want it to identify email users. So I do that and I hit OK. And now I've imported essentially the certificate. So if I try to go to Google again, boom, now it works and it's intercepting the traffic again. So now you can use Burp Suite normally, right? You can hit Control R, right? And then you can hit Control Shift R to jump to repeater. You can do Control Space, by the way, to send a request. Uh, that's something extremely useful. A lot of people are just clicking here, but in my opinion, just hitting Control Space is a lot more efficient. And then always the burps allow you to like remove header receipt and customize this to whatever, right? Uh, this you can't really do in a normal browser. You can send a request yet, right? But yeah, I just wanted to show you that in the video because Burp Studio is very, very useful. And it's especially useful to have in a background, right? So, so let's say that um, this is a normal CTF, right? And we're just kind of like clicking around. I'm seeing different things and constantly in the background, you know, these requests are being logged. And if you go to the targets, you can see that it's mapping the targets related to Google. Again, you can also essentially show uh, on a scope things. So if you want to go to scope, you can use advanced and then you can do something like Google.com. And then if you go back to essentially, uh, yes. And if you go back to essentially the target and site map, you can see that it's only showing things related to Google.com, right? Um, this domain is technically not with Google.com, but because I set a scope or a regex, uh, it does it like some, right? Yeah. So, Google.com.
at him. Yeah, like so. And yeah, as you're just making more and more requests, it is essentially logging all of it. And the reason why this might the hand is because of like, oh, before this is right, that even notice this. Uh, this is an interesting little uh, director right there, the e INTO. How do you know about that, right? And if we just passively do things as you are making requests, it is also possible as well to essentially <clears throat> to essentially send traffic through a direct with forcing, right? Through the proxy to Brub Suite. So once again, Brub Suite is running on 88k, and you can essentially force request through that proxy so that for Noodle back here, it will catalog all of those requests that were rally then like months again, kind of like stack deep inside of here, okay? But yeah, I'm not going to go more in depth in Burp to do some really quick things that I wanted to show you, but let us continue, right? So there are some extensions that I personally liked. So let me just remove the uh, the proxy so it won't go through uh, Burp to it. Um, so one of the, uh, this will just make it faster. So there are some extensions that I quite like. I quite enjoy built with extension. Essentially what build with does is that it's a fingerprinting tool that can be extremely useful for finding out what type of technology is running on a specific website. And this is very useful when you are essentially just trying to identify like, okay, this is running on PHP, this is running on a specific CMS, right? The content management system, specific version. Is that version uh, vulnerable to something um, search right? right? So, or really just anything like this. And being able to fingerprint a specific version can be very valuable. The same thing applies with a tool called Vapalizer. This is probably my favorite just because it's so quick and convenient. So Firefox extension. And I also hand recommend it once you get up like your basic tool links and stuff like this, for now I'm just doing uh, extensions, that you essentially go back and you take a new snapshot of the um, here, right? Just because it's convenient. Um, and then there is another one as well that I quite like. It's called Hike Tools, Firefox extension. Essentially what Hack Tools is, it's more so a convenience than anything else. Because, so, I'll show you in a bit. So once again, it can be nice to have it be into Nido. So essentially what it does, is just that it has a bunch of different um, commands ready, right? So these are essentially like a basic or virtual. It also covers things like stuff for uh, PHP, yeah, reverse, right? It's pretty convenient to have this in one place. This is essentially T2I. I'm sure not familiar with that. It's like stabilizing a shell after Prevesk, if you're not uh, familiar. And this is also general useful things with regards to uh, privilege escalation on Linux specific, right? And just has some of the useful things. Um, yeah. And also uh, one thing that I want to show you specific about this tool, which can be important, because let's say that we are doing Prevesk, right? So we are essentially like looking for SUD binaries. We copy this, we run this, and we are looking for SRD binaries on the system that we are at. But then when I'm all tabbing in there, you can see that it's like, oh, I have to kick this again, then that's kind of all right. You can essentially just to go through right here. Oh, let's see, so we can keep it dark. And then we can also put it in <clears throat> full screen mode like so. So when I'm going back, we have it right here again. Okay. So that's pretty convenient, cool. just like a small little thing, but I thought it was worth mentioning in case you like to use this tool a lot and having to click in a right with open each time to be a bit uh, inconvenient, but the, it, here it's like boom, boom, back and forth, right? So yeah, that's really what I wanted to show you for uh, for tools for now. Um, obviously, you can install stuff like uh, Limpies. Mm -hmm. So I personally attempt to like having my tools and op tools, you can see I don't have that, and then something like Prevost. Um, and if we go to the app now, you can see that I created tools. So, and you can also see that I created a Prevesk folder. Right? I want to show you some other handy paths as well. Uh, so if you want to go to, for instance, the, uh, let's say it's user fair, and then it's, I believe, web shells. Here is also some default web shells. Okay. 
that. You know, can be quite handy to have. Mm hmm. Yeah, so... Hmm. Though it also has some, I don't quite remember the... Maybe it's a thing. Right, it's an user share. And then Windows. Binaries are resources, right? And here you can also find some tools as well. Um, for instance, like Netcat can be quite handy to have. WGAT, etc. And here you have other tools as well. So for instance, a a specific version of Mimikat, right? So I just wanted to show that as well. These are some default binaries that are essentially on Kali Linux that you might not be aware of. But other than that, um, really just, you know, put on your tools. You can create a web shell tool. You can create like a, uh, for instance, like your favorite word list or whatever. Uh, I definitely suggest that you install um, like Seclist, right? Definitely recommend that. But yeah, that's really what I wanted to show for in this video. I hope it was useful. I hope you learned something new. Obviously, if you want to learn how to crush the OCP and you want to learn hacking in general, we have amazing courses for that down below. Check it out. You can try it for free for a day in case you have any doubts at all. We have hundreds of students and people are just absolutely loving it. And you can check out the reviews there as well. So I think you will love it as well. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day. Keep learning.